on Chronicle in High Definition. Anxious families. We were told she was going to die. Angry patients. Protests. Even death threats. Doctors under fire. Their licenses are in jeopardy in some cases. They are in jeopardy, yeah. If you think you know the whole story about Lyme disease, think again. The testing, shaky. There's no way to know that anybody has Lyme disease. The treatment, controversial. People are desperate and they're sick. And what's the next hot zone for infection? We look at the 128-495 corridor. Ticked, next on Chronicle. The diagnosis was grim, confirmed by four different neurologists at Boston's top hospitals. The cause of Susan Mercurio's numbness, pain, and tingling, multiple sclerosis. I went in for the MRI, uh, first of the brain, where they found lesions in the brain. Still, Susan couldn't let go of her suspicion that she might have Lyme disease. After all, the Hamilton resident had been bitten by ticks and once even had Lyme's distinctive bullseye rash. But doctors insisted that was impossible. Multiple Lyme tests said she didn't have the illness. Treatment for MS began. Her decline was swift. I lost my vision back in 2000. Susan was advised to start pricing wheelchairs and even had the dubious honor of finding herself a centerfold. Brigham and Women's Hospital opened a brand new MS center in yeah. Boston, yeah. and I just happened to make the centerfold. But something didn't sit right. Susan insisted on yet another Lyme test. This time, it came up positive. This MS poster woman didn't have MS at all. She started on simple antibiotics, the customary treatment for Lyme. Her symptoms began to disappear. Today, I, th I really feel you have to be your own advocate, and I wouldn't be here today with a different diagnosis. I, th I think that I would either be dead or I would be crippled in a wheelchair if I continued down that path. It was as baffling as it was heartbreaking. Nine-year-old Meredith Lyon of Wenham was disappearing in front of her mother's eyes. She had uh, psychosis, dementia, visual hallucinations. We were told she was going to die and we were seeing rapid daily decline. By the time Kay Lyon's daughter was put in a locked ward, she was on a battery of powerful psychiatric drugs. Lithium, Tegretol, Risperdal, uh, Klonopin. But Lyon had been reading up on Lyme disease and its effects on the brain. Even though her daughter's Lyme tests were negative, Lyon asked Meredith's doctors if antibiotics might be worth a shot. Every one of them refused. Um, it, and the, I was met with scorn, um, disdain. To find a doctor willing to even try antibiotics, Lyon had to travel out of state. The results were dramatic. It was as if she woke up from a coma. Misdiagnosis of Lyme disease transmitted by the tiny deer tick may be more common than many in the medical world would care to admit. A typical story is, I don't know what you have, but you don't have Lyme. Well, I think the doctor should stop with, I don't know what you have, uh, because there's no way to know that anybody has Lyme disease. Just check in your mouth. Just say, eh. Uh, okay. Dr. Sam Danta believes Lyme can be hard to test because the bacteria have a unique ability to hide in the body. I think they have to be inside cells. The immune system can no longer get to them or see them. One time head of the Lyme unit at Boston Medical Center, Danta thinks doctors put far too much faith in current tests, which have been shown to be inaccurate up to half the time. What's more, Danta believes that unless Lyme is detected in a timely fashion, a chronic form of the disease can take hold, impervious to the standard 30-day treatment with antibiotics. For this chronic form of Lyme, Danta's antibiotic treatment is open-ended. I tell patients we average 18 months of treatments to get them either all better or mostly better. Just one problem, chronic Lyme doesn't exist according to the mainstream medical establishment. And doctors who choose to treat chronic Lyme with long-term antibiotics do so at their own risk. They have been targeted 
they have all, most of them have come under investigation. And uh, they... So their, their licenses are, are in jeopardy in some cases? They are in jeopardy, yeah. Doctors like Charles Ray Jones of New Haven currently facing charges by the Connecticut Medical Examining Board. Science journalist Pamela Weintraub is convinced Dr. Jones saved her son Jason. He'd been bedridden for years, racked with pain, missing months of school. But his Lyme tests were negative. Weintraub was told Jason didn't have Lyme. He had psychiatric problems. Thanks to uh, Dr. Charles Ray Jones and other heroic doctors who treated him as he got older. He is a graduate of Brown University today and he can walk and do all kinds of and talk with the best of them and do all kinds of things. But he would have been thrown away by the mainstream. He was thrown away by them. Coming up next, almost a half century with Lyme. All kinds of central nervous system vision problems have been blinded hundreds of times. It was here in Old Lyme, Connecticut in the mid-70s that a cluster of folks began showing up at doctor's offices with a curious rash and arthritis-like symptoms. What began as a local medical mystery has evolved into a major medical controversy that rages to this day. How can this be? How can this be in this world when, when, the, when these people are so sick? Pamela Weintraub is at the Harvard Coop tonight talking about her new book, Cure Unknown, Inside the Lyme Epidemic. A veteran science journalist, Weintraub came to her subject the hard way. She and her entire family lived it, suffering for years from a host of increasingly debilitating symptoms, headaches, fatigue, and disabling pain. Finally, they received a diagnosis, Lyme disease. And the implications of failing to treat? Devastating. This is a disease that is, if, if diagnosed and treated early in most people, is entirely curable and truly no big deal in most people. But when you let it go on, it, it goes to the brain, it goes to the nervous system, and it becomes very entrenched. Lyme disease was first identified by Alan Steer, a rheumatologist at Yale. But not long after, Steer became convinced the hype surrounding Lyme disease had gotten ahead of the science. I think the infection has become overdiagnosed. Lyme disease does mimic many other illnesses, and people with some of these other illnesses now think that they have Lyme disease. The result, a tighter, more restricted definition of Lyme. But many feel the disease is too complex and has too many variations to be contained in a simple definition. Thousands of patients, many of whom did see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different doctors before they were diagnosed because the doctor said you have negative blood tests, you don't have Lyme disease. I think it's rare. We see about one such patient a year. I understand at Stony Brook, which is another major center, that they see about one uh, second. Please, please, this is a hearing. Dr. Steer, once hailed as a hero by Lyme patients for putting a name to their symptoms, had become for many a villain. Steer, now at Mass General, declined our request for an interview. In fact, he has avoided the media for a number of years because of the controversy it generates. His stance that Lyme disease is overdiagnosed has been met with outright hostility from the Lyme community.